Hey there guys, does your tower fan sound like this? All squeaky, all annoying? It's not a hard fix. In fact, if you look at these at the store, they can be $100 to $150 to replace. That's pretty expensive to just throw away if it's just one little squeak. I'm going to show you how to fix that squeak today. Piece of cake. All you're going to need is a couple screwdrivers, maybe a drill, some grease, just a little bit of time. Let's go. Of course we're going to want to unscrew the base off of this, whatever it may be. Different models and different brands are going to be different, but the way they package these is all about the same and the base goes on about the same way. After that, you can use a flathead screwdriver or like I'm using, a plastic automotive trim tool. Start popping this thing apart. Of course I've removed the screws from the holes I just showed you, and now I'm trying to split the body on its natural split lines. The body here kind of clips together, and you have to find ways to kind of pry it apart so that the clips don't totally get destroyed. You may break one or two, but there's a lot of them, and once you've figured out how the first one works, all the rest work about the same. We're just going to carefully pry this and try to get this cover off and split the unit open so we can get access to the motor and the squirrel cage. Well, as you see, I pulled that back cover off successfully, but when I tipped it over, of course all the screws I was trying not to lose fell right out, thus extending the project time by a few minutes, trying to find all those little screws I just dropped on the floor. You better believe that I wish I had used a magnetic tip when removing these, and I wish I'd put those right into my magnetic screw holder. Keep that in mind. One more screw is still hiding out, but we'll find it before we're done. Yeah, there's that squeak right there in the motor portion as we expected it would be. You can see right there at the bottom that spinning bearing is of course where it's squeaking, as we expected. Now as you can see all the dust and scum that's collected in this thing, that is pretty common. You know how that is even with the box fan, eventually they just get gross. This is just from sucking in dust, maybe pet hair, anything else throughout the house for its long life while it's operating. Not only is that nastiness going to clump up inside of the fan, but what it's going to also do is clump up and eventually start falling and clogging out the top side of that bearing. We'll clean that up here in just a little bit. Now I'm working without a tripod on this one, so I think I've got the phone taped to a screwdriver in the bench vise, but that doesn't really matter. We'll do the best we can, because this is a quick project. Of course we need to figure out how to get this squirrel cage out so we can access the motor. You can see there's a set screw there holding the squirrel cage to the shaft, and then the top shaft goes up into this bearing type receiver thing to rotate at the top. Really the bottom bearing is the majority of the concern, but of course we need to get this off. Now, of course, if you're not super handy and you're not used to the touch of the finer feelings of a impact driver or a drill, I suggest just using a hand screwdriver. This isn't a hard one, but I'm going to be using a drill for the majority of this project. Now that we've got the top half free, we're going to go ahead and try to get the bottom half free, removing that set screw that mounts the squirrel cage to the shaft on the motor. A little wiggle and a pull, and it starts removing from the shaft. I'm going to try to get a close shot here and you can see there's usually a flat spot on the shaft. This allows the screw to fasten down and not get twisted around, but hold securely in place so that that motor can rotate the squirrel cage. And with a little tug, of course it comes right out. That is, if you already released the top, as we did. Set that to the side for a minute. And just look at all the filth in here. I'm going to try to clean it by hand, but what I would suggest to you is blow it out with an air compressor. Take your time with a brush and clean it out. You might as well get it clean while you're in here. I'm going to do the best I can, but I don't actually have any cleaning supplies where I'm at. Now if you look at the top of the shaft here, you're going to see what I was talking about with all that dust buildup. It's starting to work its way down into the top of the shaft of the motor, and because of that, 
you're gonna get extra squeaking. That dust is gonna start absorbing the grease that's inside of the bearing, and it's gonna start drying it out and causing problems. As that bearing dries out, it could even start getting flat because it is making metal on metal contact instead of floating on the grease and staying lubricated. As you can see, I'm trying to get the large portion of that grease to start pushing together with the dust just to get a clump and pull off. After this, we'll have to try to do a little finer cleaning just to get stuff out of the top. And I really like this dental pick. You can get a pack of them at Harbor Freight for next to nothing. That works great for picking all sorts of junk out of cracks. And I'm gonna keep using this here. But you can use anything you want. Little wooden toothpick, whatever. While we're picking out clumps of dust, it's probably time to find at least the larger clumps that we can get out inside of this motor area. Now you should never be able to hear that. It's just worn out, it's getting dry. All of those months and years rotating has let that bearing just warm up and eventually work most of the grease and lubrication out. And of course that dust has come in and dried it out. Now lots of people would just spray WD-40 down into it, but honestly, that is not gonna work. Now I have this PB blaster and WD-40 is going to work as well right now for the sake of just getting lubrication in. I'm using this thin penetrating lubricant also as kind of a cleaning agent to start working down into that joint and getting just some movement and some general lubrication across the bearings. So of course with fixing any type of machine or any type of motor, it's just kind of touch and go. Now I feel like I need more access to this thing because I'd like to be able to put that shaft vertical without having the rest of the cage in the way. So I'm finding the mounting screws and whatever else it takes to mount this motor in and I'm going to pull it out of the assembly so that I can just work on that motor and have much more access to the shaft and the bearing. Of course, I'm just going to want to free up any wires that I can. If I could connect everything or disconnect everything from a wiring harness, I would, but that's not the way this works, and that's all right. As long as I can get it out, I've already got so much more access. I'm going to free up as much as I can that's attached to this so I have full movement and control of this motor while I'm working on it. And of course, we can always reassemble it as long as we remember how it was assembled when we're done. Now we have full access to that loud little bearing. As you can see, it's really just like a skateboard bearing or a rolling caster bearing or anything like that. A ring with another ring of ball bearings inside and then an internal ring, spinning like a little wheel full of wheels. All we gotta do is grease it up. Unfortunately, it's a fairly sealed bearing. So we're gonna have to do the old fashioned way to do these bearings, which there is no tool for. We have to hand pack grease up into that bearing one little push at a time. Of course, first, I'm going to finish cleaning this out as much as I can with PB Blaster Penetrating Lubricant. Now, of course, I'm holding the motor horizontal like this while I'm spinning this because I want to let gravity do the work as I spin these bearings and work that thin penetrating lubricant down into the bearing itself. As you can see, it gobbled up most of what was there, and it's starting to quiet down. Remember what it sounded like just a few minutes ago before we started penetrating lubricating this thing?
Now you want the ghetto fix? I'll tell you the ghetto fix. Never disassemble this thing at all. Reach the straw of your WD-40 or your PB blaster in through the cage, down to where the bearing sits, right below that shaft where it connects to the squirrel cage, and fill it up until it stops squeaking. But the problem is, you have no control over where that lubrication is going, and it's going to spit and drip out the bottom of that fan all over your floor and continue to drip. Also, it's going to dry out pretty quickly. Not like grease that's meant to endure temperatures and long spanses of time, slowly releasing itself and keeping itself intact in the bearings. You want the ghetto fix? Go for the ghetto fix. But I'd suggest laying down a crappy towel under that fan and look out when you touch it, because it's going to be greasy. And it may even spray an aerosol of grease out of that fan across your flooring. So, you do what you want, but we're going to keep fixing it the right way. Now this is where the real fix takes place. Now that we've disassembled and gotten it clean, what we really need to do is grease that bearing. I've just got some automotive grease here, spraying it out of the grease gun. You can also just get little packets of this at the counter of AutoZone or wherever you go buy your parts. I mean, I don't go to AutoZone, but I'd buy a pack of grease from AutoZone. Anyway, I'm going to spray it out onto the scrap cardboard and put on a glove because sadly, this is the best way to pack this bearing. It's a little messy, but it's the right way. Now what I'm trying to do is just start packing grease down into the bottom of that bearing. This is where the bottom of the shaft is. This is the only way to get grease up into the bearings inside that sealed little plate. A little bit at a time rubbed into the middle and then pushed down. The skin on the tip of your finger almost acts like a little plunger and pushes very minute amounts of grease down into the bearing. Fill the middle, push it down. Scoop up the extra, fill the middle, push it down. It's like you're just pumping a little plunger in there. This is about the same way you pack wheel bearings. You fill your hand with grease and push the wheel bearing into your palm over and over and over again until you finally push enough grease in that it goes through the bearings and starts showing up coming out the other side. That's what we're trying to do here. As you can see the majority of the grease I've put is gone. It's in that bearing. Now I need to grab more grease and do this over and over and over again. At some point I'll meet some resistance and won't be able to pack anymore. And that's when we'll start turning the shaft to start working this grease in and warming it up to make room for more grease to get pushed in. This will be a process that will probably take up to 10-15 minutes. So you can see I'm turning the shaft manually on the other side while I pack the grease and that's nice, but I need to get a lot of rotations and I'm not going to plug this in and have it working with live electrical right now because I don't want the motor to be out of my control. I'm going to take my power drill and hook it to the shaft on the other side. This is going to allow me to rotate that bearing. Now what you can see is some of the grease I've packed starting to seep because it's getting warm and it's expanding. It wants to come out the bottom, but this is a great time for me to push it in with my finger and rotate it and keep pumping that grease into that hole so it can work its way into those bearings. We're also going to add a bunch more grease and keep packing it in. Because like I said before, now that we're spinning the bearing, we're creating at least some level of friction, but we are moving the grease, and just the movement of the grease is causing some level of friction in the grease just from stirring it. And that means the grease is going to warm up, and it's going to become much more malleable, and it's going to work into those bearings and up into that empty bearing housing that used to be packed with grease. We're going to spin for a while here, and I'm going to speed this up. We're also going to pack a bunch of grease in here. We're going to keep packing grease until we just start seeing grease bleed out the top up where the shaft is on the other side of the bearing. That verifies to us that the entire inside of that bearing is indeed well greased and it's going to hold that grease in the future.
Now I just blasted through about 10 minutes of footage there, but what I want to show you is after packing that grease and rotating it, the grease is starting to push up through the top of the bearing, and look, it's pushing out other clumpy old greasy dust out of the top of that shaft that I can pick again with that dental tool. This is proof that the grease is starting to make its way up through the other side of the bearing, but this is also proof that all that dust was getting in there, drying it out, clumping up the old grease that was supposed to stay nice and clean. That's a big problem, and that ruins bearings. We are just about through solving this problem. I hope you're having the same success I'm having right now. Let's keep going. We're not far from done. Another quick fast forward there, and you can see how nice and clean the top of that bearing is where the shaft is. And there's little tiny hints of red starting to push up through it, which means the grease is starting to make its way through the top. After all that work, we're finally fully greasing that bearing. Very good to see. Keep cleaning it, keep greasing it, until you're sure it's done, because you don't want to open this up again before you have to. Then, of course, take a paper towel and clean off any extra grease that might be dripping around and just give the motor a quick little polish for, you know, good measure. Nothing special. Let's go ahead and put this motor back in, reassemble it, take those screws and mount everything back up the way it was. And of course, remember to beat out that squirrel cage and get all the dust that's stuck in it out. You could even take a garden hose to this if you got the time to let it dry. But just look at that. All that's going to do is get back down into that nice clean bearing. And we don't want that. Really try to clean out that squirrel cage. And this, my friends, is something I probably would say wear those masks for. As we reinstall the squirrel cage and put it back down on the shaft, remember that flat point on the shaft. This is the part that the screw fastens down to, and locks to, of course, to keep it rotating. Make sure it gets in that top sleeve or whatever is up there to hold the top of the fan in place. Now that fan should rotate just fine as soon as you fasten this down. Notice what you're not hearing. You're not hearing that squeaky bearing and everything is moving super smooth. Let's get the rest of this cover on this thing. Now once we have the cover in place, we're going to give it a few nice taps with a light fist to make sure those snaps all connect back together and the frame is rejoined as it was before we pulled it apart with those automotive tools. Everything's nice and secure and now all that's left to do is put those screws in the back that we had dropped and had to locate off the floor earlier. These screws really just hold some of the internal components in more than they hold the outside together. And it's time to find that last little rebel screw scraggling around on the floor. I'll just pull out the magnetic tool and go for a little sweep. All that's left to do is put that base back on it and get her plugged in. Just going to feed that wire through the way it's intended to be fed through. Like I said before, different manufacturers will probably be different, but they're all pretty similar to this. Finally put that last little tightener on there, whatever you want to call this. And that should be a repaired fan. Time to take her back into the house and see how she sounds. Well that's a lot better. Don't believe me? Rewind to the very first three seconds of this video and see the difference. I hope this video helped you out. You know, I see these things on big trash days sometimes, or just sitting out by people's trash cans or dumpsters. And really, 
it's usually because of this issue. You can pick that fan out, open it up, grease the bearing, and you just got yourself a $100 to $150 fan for free. I would highly suggest you go ahead and try to fix one before wasting that money. After all, all it really cost you was about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and a couple of pennies worth of grease. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for visiting the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. God bless.